Hello guys, my name is Celso. In this video, I will be talking about the circuit element. The idea is to understand the parameters that OpenSCS needs in order to create this element. We will be using some topics usually seen in power system courses, such as symmetrical components, symmetrical three-phase faults, and single line to ground faults. To get started, imagine that we want to study a certain distribution system that has its terminal connected to a large system, including multiple generators, and the transmission system as well. Due to the complexity of electrical power systems, a common practice is to consider different models of the components of the system depending on the objective of the analysis. As our goal is to study only the distribution system, we can consider the Thevenin equivalent seen from this point. Then, the red block is represented by a voltage source behind an impedance, usually called Thevenin equivalent impedance, which is exactly the circuit element in OpenDSCS. Let's say, for example, that we wanted to study only one feeder of the distribution system. In this case, applying the same principle, we would end up with a simplified circuit, with a different Thevenin equivalent impedance and the feeder in study. So, basically, the circuit element represents a Thevenin equivalent and it has the same attributes of a voltage source. This element is quite important in OpenDSS because we must define one and only one circuit element to run the power flow. Let's talk about the basic concepts required to define this element properly. The default model for this element is compiled by three voltage sources, three series impedances, which will be called ZS in this tutorial, and three mutual impedances, which will be called ZM. Let's label the voltage sources as EA, EB, and EC. The voltage at the terminals of this element as VA, VB, VC, and the voltage drop across the series impedance as delta VA, delta VB, and delta VC. The condition for the three voltage sources, EA, EB, and EC, is that they are equal in magnitude and displaced 120 degrees in phase from each other. To demonstrate how this element is specified, we must first calculate the voltage drop across the source impedance in each phase. In order to do it, I will enable the currents and phases as IA, IB, and IC. It's quite simple to see that if I apply KVL in this model, we can write that delta VA is equal to EA minus VA, which is equal to ZS times IA plus ZM times IB plus ZM times IC. For the other two phases, we have something similar. In matrix form, these three equations can be written as delta VA, delta VB, delta VC is equal to Z times IA, IB, IC, where Z bar is equal to a 3 by 3 matrix. ZS, ZM, 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 ZS, ZM, 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 ZS. Now, applying symmetrical components to Z bar, we know that Z012 is equal to the inverse of A times Z bar times A, where A is the famous transformation matrix, and alpha is a complex number with a unit module and a phase of 120 degrees. By doing this matrix multiplication, we get a diagonal matrix like the following, where the first element is called Z0 or zero sequence impedance, the second one is called Z1 or positive sequence impedance, and the last element is called Z2 or negative sequence impedance. These elements, Z0, Z1, and Z2, can be directly used to describe part of the element circuit in OpenESS, as we will see later at the end of this video. We can also describe the impedances of the element circuit either with the pair line to ground short circuit current and a three phase short circuit current or three phase short circuit power and single phase short circuit power. So now we will find expressions for these currents and powers. Let's start applying symmetrical three phase fault at the end of the Thevenin equivalent. Something like this. Notice that it doesn't matter if the fault is grounded or not because the three phase fault is symmetrical. Let's label the current on phase A as the three-phase short sequence current IS3. Remember that EAB is equal to square root of 3 times EA with a displacement of 30 degrees because we are assuming that the three-phase voltage source is symmetrical. Applying KVL in phase A, we get that delta VA is equal to ZS times IA plus ZM times IB plus ZM times IC. Putting ZM in evidence, we can write this equation here. Now, apply KCL in the fault node 
we get that IA plus IB plus IC is equal to zero and by consequence that IB plus IC is equal to minus IA. Substituting it in the first equation, we can find that EA is equal to ZS minus ZM times IA. And we have already seen that ZS minus ZM is the positive sequence impedance, Z1. Finally, we can write that the three-phase short circuit current is equal to EA divided by Z1. And writing EA as function of the line-to-line -line voltage, EAB, we can say that the module of ISC3 is equal to the module of EAB divided by square root of 3 times the module of Z1. SSC3 can be calculated as 3 times EA times the conjugated of IA because we have a three-phase system. We know that IA is equal to EA divided by Z1. So we can apply it here and say that this is equal to 3 times EA squared divided by the conjugated of Z1. And writing EA as function of EAB, we can write that the module of SSC3 is equal to EAB square divided by the module of Z1. We still need to find an expression for ISC1 and SSC1. So let's apply a single line to ground fault at the end of the Thevenot equivalent. In the same manner we did before, let's label the current on phase A as a single phase short circuit current. We still have this expression for EAB. And now, notice that the currents in phases B and C are equal to zero. Applying KVL on the phase A, we have ZS times IA plus ZM times zero plus ZM times zero because phase B and C are open. Then EA is equal to ZS times IA. Rearranging this expression by writing EA as function of EAB, we can say that the module of IST1 is equal to the module of EAB divided by square root of 3 times the module of ZS. However, as you can check in the OpenDSS help menu, a vSource element has no attribute called ZS. It can't be defined with the parameters ZM and ZS. Then, what we need to do now is to find an expression that relates ZS with Z0 and Z1. From these two equations that you said before, multiplying the second one by 2 and adding with the first one, we find that ZS is equal to 1 third of Z0 plus 2 thirds of Z1. Now, for the single phase short circuit power, we could think that it's calculated as EA times IA conjugated, because there is current in one phase only. However, by definition, it's calculated in the same manner as it is in the three phase short circuit power. So we must put a 3 multiplying this expression. Applying the procedure of substituting the current and writing EA as function of EAB, we can find a similar expression that we have found for the module of SSC3. But instead of module of Z1, here we have module of ZS. At this point, you might be asking yourself, OK, now how can I define this element in OpenDSCS? If you go to vSource in the help menu, you can see that it has a wide range of parameters. This tutorial video is focused only the most important of them, such as angle, base KV, bus 1, ISC1, ISC3, MVASC1, and MVASC3, that are what we have called as SSC1 and SSC3 so far, PU, Z0, and Z1. Coming back to the vSource model, I've already introduced you the elements ZS, ZM, EA, EAB, and these nodes 1, 2, and 3, which I've called A, B, and C. So, in OpenDSS, the parameter angle represents the angle of the voltage source in phase A of the model. The base KV parameter is a rated line-to-line -line voltage. The parameter PU represents the actual value of the single phase voltage source in per unity. EA divided by the single phase voltage base, which is EAB, over square root of 3. If you don't specify a bus 2, the connection of the three voltage sources is considered as a Y grounded by default. The name of the bus where the nodes 1, 2, and 3 are placed must be specified in the parameter bus 1. And finally, as mentioned before, we cannot describe this element with ZS and ZM. These parameters are implicitly defined with one of the pairs. Z0, Z1, ISC3, ISC1, and MVA, SC3, MVA, SC1. Now, let's create an example. I will call the circuit as example 1, naming the bus 1 as bus example, 
set PU to 1.1, base KV to 13.8, and Z1 with real and imaginary part equal to 5 and 10, and Z0 with 15 for both. I will also set the voltage basis to 13.8. If we solve and open the form edit for this resource, we can see the attributes of this element. As you can see, all of them are matching with what we have defined. The values of the pair MVASC3, MVASC1, and ISC3, ISC1 were calculated based on Z0 and Z1 that we have defined. If we go to show and line to neutral voltage, we can see that the actual voltages are in accordance with the PU value of 1.1 that we have defined. You can also use ISC1 and ISC3 instead of Z1 and Z0. Let's set ISC1 equal to 1000 and ISC3 equal to 2000, for example. As you can see, the value of MVA SC1, MVA SC3, Z1 and Z0 have changed in accordance to the values of ISC1 and ISC3. Let's understand the values presented on this table. In the example created, we have set the base KV equal to 13.8, single phase line to ground short circuit current equal to 1000, and three phase short circuit current to 2000. We have already deduced some expressions based on the single phase line to ground and three phase faults, which are summarized below as 1, 2, and 3. The key point here is that when you define either ISC1, ISC3 or MVA SC1, MVA SC3, OpenDSS understands these parameters as a module. In our case, for example, it means that the module of ISC1 is equal to 1000 and the module of ISC3 is equal to 2000. If we pay attention to the table with the description of the circuit element, we can notice that there are two parameters called X1, R1 and X0, R0. They define the ratio between X1, R1, and X0, R0, and by default, their values are 4 and 3, respectively. From the table, if we take X1 divided by R1 and X0 divided by R0, we will get exactly 4 and 3, which means that the OpenDSS default values of X1, R1, and X0, R0 are being used. Basically, what OpenSS does is to calculate the module of Zs and the module of Z1 through equations 1 and 2, of which we can get that the module of Zs is equal to the module of Eab over square root of 3 times the module of ISC1 and the module of Z1 is equal to the module of Eab over square root of 3 times the module of ISC3. Finally, with the ratios x1 over R1 and x0 over R0, OpenDSS takes the module of both sides of equation 3 and solves for R0. With R0, X0 is also defined due to the ratio X0, R0. Let's take our example as a demonstration. Applying these two expressions, we get that the module of Zs is equal to 7.9674 ohms and the module of Z1 is equal to 3.9837 ohms. From the table in OpenDSS, by taking the calculated values of R1 and X1, we can find that the module of Z1 is exactly equal to 3.9837 ohms, as expected. However, the value of the module of Zs is not shown in the table, as you can see. To check its value, we have two options. The first one is to take it directly from the Y' prime matrix of the circuit element, which is a 6 by 6 matrix with the following format where the matrix Z, 3 by 3, is the inverse of the small y matrix. To get this matrix from OpenSS, after solving the circuit, go to Export and Y prime. Notice that the matrix shown has 12 columns. It happens because the real and imaginary parts of the elements are in different cells. So, if we want to get Zs from this matrix, we must take the inverse of one of these 3 by 3 submatrices. The second option is to calculate from equation 3, once we already have Z1 and Z0 from the table. By doing so, we find that the module of Zs is equal to 7.9674, as expected.
We can also use MVA-SC3 and MVA-SC1 to define this element. Just for fun, if you type form edit vsource.source, the table showing the information of this element will pop up automatically when you run the script. Checking the table, we can notice the same behavior as in the case that we have used ISC3 and ISC1. The default values for the ratios x1, r1, and x0, r0 are used. In this case, OpenSCS has done essentially the same process. The only difference is that in expressions 1 and 2, it uses the equation that relates the impedances Zs and Z1 with the short circuit powers instead of the short circuit currents. These expressions can also be checked in the help menu. In MVA SEC1 description, it says the Zs impedance is determined by squaring the base KV and dividing by this value, which is our equation 1. Then, it says Z0 is determined by Z0 equals to 3 times Zs minus 2 times Z1. That is exactly our expression 3. Finally, in MVA SC3 description, it says that Z1 is determined by squaring the base KV and dividing by this value. That is exactly our expression 2. To summarize this final discussion, you have three options to define the circuit element. If you know either the module of MVA SC3 and MVA SC1 or the module of ISC3 and ISC1, you can declare then and use the OpenSCS X over R default ratios or you can define your own. If you know either MVA SC3, MVA SC1 or ISC3, ISC1 as phase or quantities, you can calculate the X over R ratios by using the equations that we have shown and use them together with these parameters. Or you can calculate Z0 and Z1 by using the equations that we have shown and specify the circuit element with them. And finally, the easiest way, if you already know Z0 and Z1, just use them.